Hey, Hickok 45 here. What about this beauty? Got a lever gun, again, Marlin, 1894 Cowboy Limited. Octagonal barrel. This is another one of my favorite rifles. They had this since uh, 1997 when I uh, shot my first Cowboy match with it. And uh, just a wonderful gun. Didn't shoot it uh, but three or four years in those matches. I got an 1873 Yubarty you've seen. Shot it probably most, uh, most often. But I love this and uh, shoot it every now and then. It's, uh, it's in 45 Colt, long Colt, same cartridge that the uh, Peacemaker, the Colt Single Action Army fires, so it is chambered for that round, and a uh, very versatile uh, cartridge, actually. So, sweet gun, uh, shoots, shoots very well. If, I, if I'm on with it, it shoots well anyway. Uh, it's a hot day, it's very, very humid, I'm dripping water all over it, and I will continue to do that, and my glasses will probably fog up. It's, uh, I don't know, it's up there in the 90s, I think it's almost 100 degrees today in the middle of Tennessee. And uh, they're talking about some incredible heat indexes and what it actually feels like, you know, and it really does feel feel pretty hot. Uh, of course, I'll decide what it feels like. Just give me the temperature. You know, they go crazy with those indexes. So we're going to struggle through it and uh, take a few shots with this baby. Uh, got a lot of cowboy fans out there. Uh, I hear from them a lot, and of course, I'm one of you. I love these things. And uh, let's just uh, proceed a little bit. I'm going to shoot uh, just a variety of things, just have some fun with it. We won't shoot for an hour or anything, but for a few minutes here, we'll take a few shots and uh, knock over a few things. Right. Don't tell Chucky Schumer, but this thing holds 13 rounds. I had it loaded in the interest of time with an empty case in the chamber. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Click. It's hard to miss with this gun. Let's load some more more ammo in this thing. It's just like butter. I've uh, shot it enough to where it's just really smoothed out and a uh, nice gun. These guns, you know, they have external hammer. You have to uh, load them with the lever closed. You, you can't just, okay, I'm going to be safe, you know, have the lever open so it won't fire. You can't load it. So I do have to close that. Okay, put these big 45 slugs in there. These are 250 grain rounds. I load these myself. 45 Colt. This is the configuration that uh, pretty much it was uh, the original 45 Colt round. Those you're looking at there on the belt are a little bit different. Those are 300 grain bullets. Those are some hefty bullets and with a hotter load to boot. So we'll shoot some of those today too. Those are similar. They're probably not quite as hot as the, the Garrett cartridges you can order. Uh, Make sure we got our full house there. Yeah, magazine's full. This thing loads like butter too. That's nice. If you have a lever gun, uh, maybe a 3030, just depending on what kind it is, Winchester or, or a brand new gun, could be a Marlin, uh, uh, could be any kind. Sometimes the loading gate's a little stiff and you pinch yourself, you know, as you're loading the rounds in. This one's always uh, been really smooth to load. Uh, very uh, very buttery in a lot of ways and that's one reason it's so popular it used to be the lever gun on the cowboy action circuit it, I guess it still is probably to a large extent although the 1873s have, uh, have come a long way there uh, let's take a few shots here close again like having an AK, isn't it, with a lever on it. Let me, uh, let me take just a few more of those, because uh, those are kind of fun. These are light, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that, these are fairly light loads, they're kind of a standard load, I guess you'd say. And in a uh, rifle like this, that's got a little bit of weight to it, uh, they seem even lighter. You shoot these in a Colt single action, they don't seem light necessarily at all. But uh, this gun really tames them. 
as it is a fairly heavy gun. It's got a longer barrel than some of the others. The 44 Magnum you've seen me shoot in the same configuration as a shorter barrel, not as heavy. Let's go across the range a little bit. Uh, we'll start uh, close. <laughs> well, I've got about three animals I want to pop there. And with this particular round, I have to hold under the animal. But that's no excuse because I know where to hold. There you go. With, uh, with this load, I'm holding on the very bottom of the animal, and then as I move up the hill, I'm, uh, I'm shooting on out there a little bit further, it's out to whatever it is, 65, you know, 70 yards, and then I'm having to hold kind of on the bottom of the actual body of the animal. So it, it changes, you know, as you move in, in distance, so you kind of use Kentucky windage and figure out where, where you need to hold. But as you can see, it's a really sweet shooter, and I've got a couple more rounds in there. I'll go ahead and empty it. on the gongs. Now as I was saying, these rounds are just moderate moderate loads. I shoot those in my pistols and in rifles and just anything. That's kind of my standard load and I guess you could say in a lot of ways. And I don't give out specific loading information but that's just a moderate load. Uh, when I go to a cowboy match it seems really really hot compared with what a lot of people are shooting. A lot of folks are loading down their ammo to be more competitive and all that. Shooting 38s and you know really really light load which is fine. You know you go to win that's fine i used to be that way when i did idpa and ipsc and those sorts of things as, uh, as much as the uh, the rules would allow like everybody did but i go to cowboy matches when i do that to, to bang targets hard with big heavy bullets so uh i don't try to do that now as i was saying earlier these are some big boys these are 300 grain bullets and they're pretty warm now they they have a different point of impact so let's put some of these in uh, they shoot lower because they're hotter and I think I have to hold right pretty much on target they pretty much hit right where I'm holding and for those of you who don't shoot a lot I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about I mean you get a sight picture with your gun whether it's a Glock or a lever gun where you get your sights lined up well even though you have your sights lined up uh, especially shooting at different ranges that doesn't mean that's where that bullets going exactly that means where the, if that particular load hits maybe, or maybe it shoots above that and maybe you can't adjust the sights anymore, you know, then, then you have them adjusted or just whatever it is. Maybe you need to raise the sights, but they won't raise anymore. Uh, so that's just kind of a Kentucky windage thing and figuring out the sights, figuring out the particular gun you're shooting, the particular ammo you're shooting and, and where to hold. And uh, that's some good advice some, or some advice I would give you, I think is good, is uh, any load you're going to hunt with, if you're a hunter, you need to really make sure you know where it hits. And uh, if you're going to enjoy shooting, same thing, just planking, you know, know where, where the round hits. And I have to do that myself because I have a lot of guns, as you know. I come out here and I'm going to do a video and enjoy this gun or a different gun. And before the video, I'll say, okay, now where, let's see, I've kind of forgotten where, where to hold maybe with this gun. And I'll take a couple of shots. Oh, that's right. And that's what I discovered, remembered with this one. I took a couple of shots. I couldn't hit anything. Whoa, whoa, that's right. I have to hold low with my standard load with, the, with uh, this gun. And then I pop, pop four in a row. So that's just something you, you, you need to do and uh, be prepared. If you're going to go into the field hunting, uh, you really want to get it sighted in. So now these you'll notice probably will kick a little more because they are a 300 grain bullet. And it turns this gun into kind of a poor man's 4570, as, as they say. Uh, and I've knocked down most of the animals, but uh, anything I hit, you'll see that it gets hit a little harder.
for demonstration purposes, I'll shoot the swinging plates here. I really don't like to shoot them with something that heavy very much, but I'll shoot them. I'll go across there once, see if I can hit them, uh, and you'll see that they're going to swing a little bit more. <laughs> that was swung all the way around, didn't it? Hope I didn't do any damage to them. Let's try that bottle of water or uh, drink there. Whoops. Empty. All right. I'll put a couple more in. Uh, I wanted to show you the difference. And uh, that also speaks to the uh, versatility of this cartridge. Now, if you have a 45 Colt and you don't hand load and you're just at the mercy of whatever you can pick up at the gun shop, you probably don't have a gun that's uh, this potentially as powerful as, as this one because I hand load. Uh, the 45, let me give you the reason for that. Uh, the uh, 45 uh, Colt single action army pistol, a lot of those are around. Got a few of those, right? The old ones, first generation and everything. Uh, the steel in those, of course, is old. Those are antiques, a lot of them. And what they're afraid of, the manufacturers of ammo are afraid if they load up something like this, and they put it in a cute little box and it's in your friendly gun shop, someone might walk in and buy a Colt single action or they already have one they inherited from a, somebody and they don't know much about it, but they want to shoot it. They see it says 45 Colt on the barrel, so they know that's the caliber. So they go buy a box of 45 Colt. Well, you know, too powerful really for that particular gun. And so, so that's why uh, most ammo that you buy in a store for 45 Colt is, is like, like this or lighter, okay? Uh, but if you hand load, you can you can crank it up. There's no reason in a Marlin or in a Ruger that you it, they will handle a really stout load. Okay, so you see what I do. You notice the difference between these these bullets. And I may have gone over this before in another video. Uh, and I use what I do is of course I keep them in separate boxes. I don't put them in piles and mix them up with this. But it's a different bullet for one thing. It's a totally different contour. These 300 grain bullets, and I load them in nickel cases. So I do that uh, as a reminder to myself. It's a different bullet. It's in a nickel case, and it's also in a box that has the label on it as to what it is, and uh, you know, or it's in this belt. You know, so I'm not going to get them mixed up. Now that's just the way I do that to be sure and be safe. So it's a very versatile uh, cartridge. You know, when you hand load, and you all that do that know exactly what I'm talking about. It turns this gun right here into a little 4570, almost. All right, so. We'll take a few more, and uh, that bottle there thought he's going to get away from me today just because I ran out of ammo. Well, Daycock never runs out of ammo. So let's take him out, and then we'll uh, shoot a few more. I'll tell you another thing about this gun. It does hold 13. I don't know if I put 13 in that time, but you get 13 uh, cartridges in there, each one weighing 300 grains. He's got a heavy gun. Feels good though. All right. <laughs> Let's go long range for a while. There I go. I can't quit on a miss. Not doing this. Buffalo. Yellow buffalo. He's a smart Alec. All right. Fun gun to shoot. Fun gun to shoot. If you've not discovered the joys, I know I've said that before, of a lever gun. Uh, particularly one that shoots a pistol cartridge. They're just a lot of fun. And uh, the 45 Colt might be an option. If you are going to be reloading or you already reload 45 Colt, you've got a gun that has an incredible amount of versatility right here. Because the Marlin will handle just about anything you can put in it, believe me. It's just like a Ruger, like a big Red Hawk or something. If you get a gun like that in 454 Casol or 45 Colt, it'll handle these same cartridges I'm shooting. 
and uh, you can have a lot of fun with it. You can load it down, or you can load it pretty powerfully, and you can uh, hunt with it, just do whatever you like to do. I hunt mainly just steel targets, but sometimes they're a little contrary and don't want to fall, so it's kind of fun to reach over into the other uh, box and get some of those nickel cases and uh, throw a 300 grain round out there if I uh, am in the mood or feel the need to. So, the Marlin uh, 1894 Cowboy Limited. Uh, a lot of history in that gun I won't go into. I think I have before. Been around a long time. A very reliable gun. A lot of fun to shoot. And uh, hope you lever gun addicts uh, enjoyed that. So uh, here at the compound, we're having fun even on this hot, humid day. And uh, life is always good.